Bagden Board. I am Vlad St. Valentine. With me is the host with the most, Mr. Caden Ramos. How's it going? Not bad. How are you? I'm doing great, man. How are you? Not bad. Not bad. We're here today on Bagden Board talking about Venom 33 and the ongoing King of Black series. And, man, I we, we raved on about King of Black 3 and how good it was mm-hmm. and how action-packed it was with Thor entering the battlefield and how well-earned it was, especially if you've been reading. If you've been reading Venom... Uh, and I, I jumped in at 17 on uh, starting the absolute carnage. And again, I'd need to go back and read the, the one through 16 that mm-hmm. introduced us to uh, Rex, whatever the fuck. Strickland. Strickland, yeah. Do you want to say Colston? I remember <laughs> I remember Strickland because Strickland for Hank Hank Hill. Okay, yeah. yeah. All right, Rex Strickland. All right, got it. So, God damn it, that's going to be in my head from now on. <laughs> I'm going to see Buck Strickland with that symbiote on. <laughs> Got to free the symbiotes on top. I'm going to Photoshop that for you, by the way. (laughs) And send it to you so you can put it in this video. Ah, shit. So we actually start this issue off with a really cool scene with Peter Parker basically trying to take all the pressure he can off Dylan. Because they're wanting to put Dylan in the battlefield because he has the ability to sever the symbiotes from uh, the hive. Mm -hmm. Uh doesn't really obliterate them. It looks like he's just been obliterating them, you know, but it's really just, I guess, knocking the symbiote out, severing its connection to the hive mind and uh, freeing it from Noel's control. That's fun to say. Yeah. Noel's control. Ah, uh, Noel's control, the name of the band called it. But yeah, we get to, you know, we get a nice scene with, with Spider-Man basically laying out to Dylan that he's been through what he's been through and all the pain and heartache and uh, the loss he's felt and, that it's okay to say no to this. It's okay. He will protect him. He promised his dad he would protect him and take care of him. You know, he's like, Uncle Spidey is here to make sure you don't have to face anything you don't want to face. And Dylan, again, we get the scene we got from... Uh, Bird 3. Yeah, it was the, uh, I want to hurt something, you know. And it was still cool again. Yeah, yeah. So, if anything was worth repeating, that scene certainly was. Yeah, no, and, and it showed great depth in uh, the development of Spider-Man as a character, too, throughout... Uh, his entire run, really. Can yeah, get- you know, we're we're looking at him from we're looking at him from three different eras, I guess. Um the young Spider Man is what we're kind of getting with the the in the movies and stuff right mm-hmm. now again. So the MCU. that's fresh in our minds. Yep. The idea of the, the high school Spider Man. Uh you and I are reading Maximum Carnage right now, which is he's still trying to solidify his relationship with MJ, but he's coming into his own as a man. Mm -hmm. You know, what does it take to be a man is really what's um, not just, you know, I've got to do the right thing. I've got to be responsible. And I'm a teenager. And, you know, it's a metaphor for puberty, essentially shooting that webbing everywhere. Yeah. Uh, But instead we've got him, you know, growing into that. And now we have, we're past all that, you know, he's through now he's struggling with his morals and moral issue and what, you know, what is it to be a good man? Can you compromise your morals and still be a good person? Or do you have to fight fire with fire to, you know, or just get run over by the evil? Yada, yada, yada. Yeah. I'm, I'm digressing. We'll get to those in the next one. Um, But here he's, he's, he's been through the ringer, mm-hmm. you know, he's been through the civil war. Yeah. He's faced every sort of moral quandary he possibly can at this point. The world knows who he is, and now the world's over, pretty much. I mean, it's... I haven't heard him say a boo about, I wonder where MJ is, you yeah. know, or I hope she's okay. You know, as opposed to just trying to... He probably assumes she's already been taken by a symbiote, and it's just, let's try to undo this, and maybe I got a chance of getting her back. Yeah. And everybody back, you know. Seeing the way he's taken to Dylan, and the way that he is willing to risk everything to protect that kid, even by not letting him out on the field. And I think he straight up lied to him when he's like, we will win the day. I know we will without you, you know, to basically take that off him completely. Yeah. He's full of shit. There was no fucking way they were going to win without him. No, but I mean, still giving Dylan the choice, you know, the a choice that he never had that most, most of the superheroes never had in their origin. Here's the problem with that. The reason Spider-Man never had the choice is because you don't have a choice. He's lying to Dylan, but he was he was doing what was best for Dylan, he thought. It's not a bad thing. No. He was trying to protect him. But telling him he has a choice, 
it's the Spider-Man line. Great power comes great responsibility. The responsibility to not just be wise with what you do, your powers, but also to use it. Use them wisely, but you you have to use them yeah. for the good. You, you Spider-Man No More was the big walk away story arc where he, you know, he tried to stop being Spider-Man and you can't. Mm-hmm. You're, if you have the ability to stop the bad things in the world, then laying down and doing nothing is just as bad. I mean, it's held it's the beginning of Boondock Saints, too. Yeah. So Yeah, that's fair. So after this, we pretty much go into the hive where we were last time with Eddie. And that's kind of where we stay the rest of the issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, buff shirtless Viking Eddie Brock and Flash Thompson just having a love in this entire episode, man. Them talking about how much they love and respect each other and like totally just growing out. Like had this been in the frat, this would have been that night they never told their families about. Yeah. And buried down in their subconscious forever. Yeah. They did get a little heavy on that. Well, it wouldn't have been as bad if they didn't have like, if they didn't have that scene twice, you know? Because we have the, when he shows up, uh, he's talking about the words that Eddie spoke at his funeral and like, all kidding aside, man, it's really good to stay, tease each other a little bit. Then Eddie's like, uh, I'm sensitive right now. Don't make fun of me. He's like, oh, all kidding aside, you know, we're, we're friends and it's nice to see you. It's nice to see you too. And blah, 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 blah. Love time, love time. But anyway, while this is going on. Eddie is you know, feeling the pain of Noel being hurt every time one of the symbiotes, I guess, is severed from him. And then all the stasis. Uh, stasis batteries. Yeah. They Matrix just, batteries. They, they start disappearing. Disappearing. Which, again, it's like, <laughs> okay. What the fuck is this place? Because then they're like, oh, well, we're not in the hive. We're kind of in the purgatory outside the hive, right in the actual central... I don't think you guys who are writing this know the rules. And I think that's why they're so damn convoluted. Like, am I wrong? I, okay. So the codex is just a memory in the hive. To my knowledge, Eddie, (laughs) Flash, Rex, they're just codices. They have no physical manifestation in the real world. There's no symbiote they're tied to. Nothing. Nope. Except for, wait, no. I guess T-Rex is symbiotes out there because we showed his physical form earlier. Like a, like in the earlier ones, we used to open the monologue. He's like, I'm probably already dead or whatever. Unless his that symbiote's been destroyed. And it's just the memory of the actual Rex that's in the, the hive. But he has his symbiote on him in the hive. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't have his symbiote on him in the hive. And he's talking about wanting to go back to it. And then Flash shows up with the anti-venom symbiote on him within this hive. But if they're just memories, they, they could be wearing a fucking tutu. What the hell does it matter? They're just memories of these people, right? That's what they're supposed to be. Yeah. I, I mean, if they're DNA imprint, impressions that are more than just a memory, okay. All right, that's fine. But I, the hell is this place? It doesn't make any sense because it... Like the way I was understanding it is like uh, it is the the hive mind. It's the the mental place, right? You know, and they're existing as memories inside of this but because they're self aware because they were connected to uh, their codices are so powerful and kind of self aware because they were connected to the symbiotes for so long that they can manipulate things from the outside. So like you have the mental representation of the physical symbiote inside this hive mind, right? And if they latch on to the the mental aspects of it, they can pilot. The physical yeah. part. That's yeah. kind of what they get out here. But why would, after those symbiotes that were latched on to the various superheroes were freed from the superheroes or freed from the, the hive or whatever, why would those codice things just go floating up? Like, they still exist within the hive. There's still memories of those things, even if they're not, the person's not bound to it. That memory still exists within the code, within the codex and the hive. I don't. It was a cool visual, I guess. Yeah, unless they're indicating that Dylan can delete codices. I'm a stupid, stupid man, and I will admit that. But and this is this is beyond me. Uh, and maybe maybe it is me. Maybe I am just as dumb as I think. But I kind of think that they don't know themselves, so they're keeping it intentionally vague. We still have to go on with Venom after 
all this. So we may see what happens with the codexes after the King Black's over. Well, I and imagine has to return. I imagine that he's going to find a way to, because if there's imprisoned symbiotes down there uh, that were <laughs> detached from him and able to have their own thoughts, because it looked like he was like bringing the venom symbiote back into the hive and controlling it. Yeah. You know, but if he just locked it up, then maybe it's down there with the rest of them. What is Noel here in this place? Is it the physical form of Noel just in all, or is it his, you know, uh, uh, some other form of like, it's very confusing. It's all very confusing. And like, what happens if he gets a blitter? We saw what happened. We got torn apart by a dragon kind of like his codice had just kind of like reformed himself, but it hurt him. Yeah. I don't know why he feels pain in this thing. That's kind of, I don't think they know. I don't know. And I'm going to need some, I'm going to need some real explanation here, ladies and gentlemen, not just, Oh, don't worry about it. Enjoy the story. Uh, you just, I can't go that far with it. There's too many different things that go, wait a minute. Cause like I will fill in the gaps for you, but when you start doing things that make that impossible to do because too much stuff contradicts itself mm-hmm. or like, doesn't make much sense. Then you're like, I, 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 I'm sorry, I just can't run with it anymore. My suspension of disbelief gets tied into a knot and I just chuck it out like the Christmas lights that I never got finished <laughs> untangling. <sighs> And you just pile them up in in slower or in, in lower and lower batches, so it's just a ball of Christmas tree. Oh, that's a good yeah. idea. That's a good so idea. You do that. It's genius. Never need a Christmas tree. You just pop the lights. You just the only problem sure. is, if one of those bulbs goes out, you're just you're fucked. Oh yeah, I know. No, but just you also got to keep bands on them as well, or else it's just a giant like heat pocket. <laughs> I've been through two houses before I figured that out. <laughs> Sorry, mom. <laughs> As we were saying, you know, Ed, Dylan, Eddie's feeling every time that Noel gets injured by Dylan on the outside and he's cutting people off and all the cap and the rest of them go floating off. And Flash, go get him, cap. Oh, he seriously says that. It was corny as fuck. They see, start seeing like big rifts in whatever space they're in. Then that's when he theorizes that they were in some sort of purgatory. They weren't actually in the hive, which it's like, <laughs> okay. All right. Fine, whatever. They're, they were in storage, storage room C, and the doors leading into the main hall. So they, they walk through the little split, and they're in, you know, they say, well, what's on their side of the purgatory? It's either heaven or hell. And that was the little description for how red it all looked. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's like the little symbiote world, but it's supposed to be like the eye of the storm, the center of the hive. I, I don't know how they figured this out since they thought they were in the hive before. And now they're like, oh, no, this is it. I just feel it in my bones. Whatever. Because there's a lot of that I can be said about this storyline. Like it, this is, this was not a bad issue. There was a lot of good stuff in it and I know I'm nitpicking the shit out of it, but there's a lot of stuff that's in the story. That's like, because, because, but flash and Eddie argue over who's going to go down there and break up the symbiotes and Eddie, you know, flash like, because it's suicide run flash like, no, I'm going to do this. I'll take it soldier. Yada, yada. And he's like, you deserve better. You're a hero. I'm not a hero. And Flash finally does what we all want to do and basically you know, you just go short of giving him the backhand. Be like, shut the fuck up and stop pissing him on about whether or not you're a hero. You're a hero. Just shut the fuck up. Yeah. You're Venom. Yeah. And let me be a soldier and go do my job. Mm-hmm. Goes well, out and gets well, his Well, she says it was his mission anyways to begin with. Well, he had a different mission than one that Eddie had done for him. Uh because he was looking for him and found Eddie instead and Eddie had taken on his mission. So he's like, well, you, you covered me before. So I'm, I got this one. Yeah. But he goes down there and gets an arm bitten off by a dragon and last second throws a bomb and blows up the canisters holding the symbiotes and they swallow him up in this metaphysical world. And the implication is that he forms with one of them. That is one of the dragons in the physical world. And there's basically an anti venom dragon busting through. And I couldn't tell if that was happening within the metaphysical world or happening in the real world because yeah. the way it was drawn, it was in that might like the way it was drawn and I, I will have it up here. It could have been Dylan in the, in the bottom corner over here and cap shield. And that might be Noel over here, or it could just be the random fucking people that were standing around the cage symbiotes in the metaphysical world. See, I didn't see those two down in the corner. All I saw down at the bottom was the black symbiote goo that swallows him up beforehand. Yeah. That's what, I was, that's what I was, that's what made me go back and think that 
Because initially I thought it was the physical world and that's what happened. Then when I saw that black goo, I was like, okay, maybe it was still the metaphysical world. But the next few lines, Eddie's like, he did it. He got one and he piloted out of here and now he's back up top fighting. He's fighting in the real world because that was their plan. We're going to go down there and try and bond with one of these symbiotes that's free of Mm Noel's control. And then we can pilot it out of this reality and back into the real world. I mean, Eddie Brock is dead. So this memory of him and from the codices is going to try and get himself into a symbiote that exists in the physical plane, Mm -hmm. the same way that Tyrannosaurus Rex, Tyrannosaurus Rex masqueraded as Rex Strickland, Rex Strickland forever, except for, you know, this is, yeah, he just wants to, it's going to have his consciousness in it, I guess, or his memories or whatever, because he loaded his codice up into Mm it. I don't know, man. He's about to be completely symbiote and Eddie Brock will be more powerful than ever, but not technically Eddie Brock anymore. I think that's yeah. obviously what's happening here. He is. He will be Venom. He died, but he will. Yeah. He will just be the, he will load himself up into his own symbiote and that'll be it. There'll be no physical body underneath the symbiote anymore. He won't be able to talk in the Wii anymore. In the what? In the Wii. In the Wii? We, we will. Oh, speak in the Wii. I was thinking about the, the game. No. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? They, they, he I, didn't, I didn't know it. him. And they, like, I was like, I can imagine them. Like, I'm, I was picturing Eddie and the symbiote like separating so they could play like Wii Bowling Night against each other. So you could have like two players by themselves. Well, yeah, or, that's like, what he did before Dylan. But now he has Dylan. So. Yeah, well, like, you know, but it doesn't split completely. Like it just like from the waist up, it goes over to the other yeah. side. They're both just, <laughs> the symbiote fucks with him and like gets in the way of his already swing through sometimes or like holds his arm back. They're playing Wii Tennis together. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But as Eddie's looking down at Flash Thompson's success, you know, and again, we're not sure. He says he broke through for the physical world. I don't mm-hmm. know if the dragon, where the dragon was at, but anyway, well, I guess we'll there, figure it out. There's an anti-venom dragon somewhere. And yeah. he's about to kill Rex, Rex Shop, so. Yeah, it looks cool. We'll figure out where that, where it's, where, what <laughs> plane of existence it exists in. Uh, but I mean, they spelled it out for us that he's up in the physical world. So fighting, I think is what he meant by all that. God, it hurts. Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, anyway, though, as as Venom is saying, you know, hey, it, it worked, it worked, Rex. Let's get down there. Noel takes control of the codex or the symbiote or the symbiote within the metaphysical world because they're not in the physical world. I'm not sure what the fuck Rex actually is at this point because I thought the symbiote that was masquerading as Rex was just the symbiote because the man himself died, mm-hmm. and so. But what Eddie was talking to was his codice, his not his. Not the T-Rex symbiote, his memory within the hive. So I don't, I don't know. But anyway, Noel takes over whatever body that is, and it transforms into Noel. And you know, he, he takes over that codex. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Yes. You gotta assume that in, inside of the mind, it is the codexes. Okay. So. We'll just, well, yes, we'll we'll assume that's what's happening. But uh, he takes over and grabs the Eddie codexy. Codex, whatever, by the back of the neck and holds him over the oblivion. It's like, oh, this is familiar. Yeah. And that's how we end on our literal cliffhanger. Literally hanging over a cliff. This one was some cool stuff going on. I just feel like the explanation was sloppy. And like, because they asked him, like, how do you know all this? And he goes, I just feel it. Like, literally, those are lines within the story. Could have been done a little bit better. Neat ideas, but. Not, you had cool ideas, but you didn't know how to get there, so you just kind of, yeah, like, did it anyway. He says, "I I just feel it," and then he says, "I feel like my other calling out to me," referring to the venom symbiote. Yeah, if you're gonna do that, throw up some black boxes with like no text, just randomly sparse throughout the the scene. Oh, as if it's calling out, or yeah, something? yeah. Or you may maybe it's one of the ones down in the down in the containers. Yeah, something I don't know. We showed that 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 uh, Noel had a personal interest in it for whatever reason was kind of holding on to it, mm-hmm. which is weird because he wasn't really interested in Eddie himself. So just Dylan. I don't know why I care much about the symbiote either, other than it spawned this whole family and or it spawned the connection with this family that spawned the little Noel child. Dylan actually is. And then he gets his powers from a god of opposite force, a light god. Uh, since Noel's the dark god. I don't know. That's what Silver Surfer was rambling on about. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe he's just the perfect combination of both of them. I don't know. 
I don't know. I don't have, I just, I, I didn't dislike this ep as this, this issue as I was reading it, but the more I talk back the more we talk about it now, I'm just like all the things I was like, what about this? And what is, what is this? Or, you know, it just maybe in retrospect, maybe I just have, have some rose colored symbiote glasses on and, I just, you know, in the moment, I'm just like, it's so cool because it's Venom and he's, he's fighting, Eddie Brock's <laughs> punching thing. But yeah, this one was mostly a love in between Eddie and Flash, but the stuff that was happening within the, within the hive, you know, it progressed the story forward and they've got a plan for getting out. Uh, I just don't understand why the codices disappeared and floated up and that was a little confusing. So yeah. <laughs> other than that, everything else can kind of be explained away. You know, all the rest of the stuff I nitpicked, it's only because that scene kind of lends itself to kind of undoing what the hell this place is. And then they also themselves are like, oh, this isn't what we said it was. It's some sort of purgatory. We don't even really know what it is. Mm -hmm. And then the next scene, Eddie's like, I know everything now. It's like, well, you just didn't even know where the fuck you were for the last like two days. Like, I don't know. Ooh. Okay. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a really nice issue as far as. Uh. As far as fan service goes, I guess. Okay. Giving us the, oh, you're Venom now, you know, Flash Thompson, giving him the seal of approval, the Flash Thompson seal of approval. Yeah, everything short of the handy, which is ridiculous because, like, why does he need his fucking approval? He's the, He was the original yeah. owner of both of those, of both Venom and Anti-Venom of those symbiotes. Like, no, he doesn't need the, he doesn't need Flash Thompson's fucking pat on the butt, y'all. I don't give a shit what y'all think. Who the fuck is walking around thinking about Agent Venom being the coolest character ever? He, he's a cool design, you know, but that was it. It wasn't because everyone was clamoring for Flash Thompson to be such a great guy. He was Spider-Man's bully. He was a dick. Yeah, uh, this, yeah I'm not going to go back into it. This one confuses me because there was good stuff. and There's a lot of things I liked, but it, there was a lot of... Um, huh? What is this place? Do you even know what is that? Is it what? I just, I felt that way after a lot of the panels. Yeah. But giant, you know, giant anti-venom dragon was fucking cool. Noel getting his ass whooping Dylan splash page. Fucking cool, You know, but we got it. We, but we got enough. You understood enough. They're going to try and get into a symbiote. Cause if they get to a symbiote, they can break free of the hive and back, get back to the real world. That's all you really need to know. And that came through. So yeah, that, that's how they're going to revive Eddie Brock. He's going to be nothing but Venom, yeah, mm -hmm. like we said. All right. Well, that was Venom 33. And then we've got, uh, after this, we got King and Black 4 is going to come out. And then King and Black 5 and I think Venom 34 all come out or come out the same week. I think so, yeah. Trace, we're going to have two more episodes of King and Black after this. And then we will obviously keep bringing the rest of Maximum Carnage. So like, subscribe, and uh, say hi to your mother's long. You like could totally play ping pong together if they want to go low tech and just sitting at stretch yeah. the other side. So do you think what I'm thinking? Finish each other off, not tell anyone. You just gotta do that, but like superimpose <laughs> Eddie in the symbiote spaces over Nandor. <laughs> <laughs> Can it be like Tom Hardy and the Venom symbiote? Yes. <laughs> we'll do that or fucking Venom and Flash in this episode. <laughs>